Hey everybody, Matty Ice here, and with the new season coming out later today, I wanted to cover a few topics that should be beneficial to new players. This will be PvE focused as I am a PvE player, but some of the concepts might have some PvP impact. So first off is survival. When doing higher end content such as master level activities, grandmaster nightfalls, and even raids, survival is key. So to help you survive, I have a couple tricks that you should follow. When fighting enemies who like to shoot straight line shots such as snipers, uh, shanks, dregs, goblins, I recommend strafing just side to side. This is going to let you avoid a lot of that damage and help you be able to find cover quickly or just eliminate the targets while avoiding damage. Speaking of, use cover. A lot of people in Destiny 2, especially on the PvE side, avoid using cover for some reason. And while Destiny doesn't have the ability to naturally peek around cover, you can just hop over it or just strafe side to side in and out of cover to avoid being hit. So if you are taking damage, I recommend sliding behind a pillar, sliding behind a barricade, just something to mitigate that damage while you're taking the time to recover and finding an opportunity to counterattack. When fighting enemies that use AoE attacks such as Boomer Knights, Minotaurs, they like to aim at your feet in order to maximize the chance of hitting you with a splash damage, so it's best to dodge these attacks by jumping while strafing. So you still want to move side to side, just kind of jump in the air while you're doing it whenever they shoot at you, so that when that shot lands at your feet, you have as much distance between you and that explosion as possible. Finally, when fighting enemies that use seeking projectiles, such as some of the vandals and captains, I find cover to be the best option, but outside of that, I like to move in a figure eight pattern, like a sideways figure eight. This pulls the shots towards you in one direction, and as you circle around, the shots can't track you enough as you're moving in the opposite direction to correct. So the shots move past you, and you take some damage, but you're able to avoid a bulk of the damage. Now with survival out of the way, Let's go into the category of weapons. Now there are a ton of weapons in Destiny 2, and I hope that this section will help give you some of the tools to figure out which ones are best for you and clear up any potential confusion. When talking about weapons and their perks, there's a lot of third-party websites and apps out there that can help you get the specific numbers for certain perks, but I like to think of the perks on the weapons as being split into just a handful of categories so that I can easily make a quick decision when I get a weapon. Perks are often only referred to by their third and fourth columns, as the first and second are typically less impactful. Now the way I group these third and fourth column perks are into four major categories. I do bonus damage, such as rampage, kill clip, swashbuckler. I do reload slash uptime, such as rapid hit, outlaw, archer's tempo, subsistence. I've got my utility, such as thresh, blinding grenades, chill clip, the disruption break. And then I've got the synergistic, as harmony, sympathetic arsenal, auto-loading holster. Now, not all weapon perks will fall neatly into these categories, but this should help you to think about and identify what perks you want to keep on a weapon. There's a reason everyone was creaming their jeans when the craftable Taipan came out with triple tap and firing line, and that's because it was a damage perk with an uptime perk, meaning you could do more damage for longer periods of time. An easy confliction example would be something like kill clip subsistence. While it's in the same category of damage and uptime, they conflict with each other or they fight each other, as one of them needs a reload to get the damage perk and the other one tries to stop you from reloading. I'm going to link the third party apps that I use in the description of the video, but just so you know Destiny Item Manager and D2 Gunsmith are some of the most popular sites out there for figuring out what weapon perks are popular and have good combinations, as well as describing what exactly they do. Now that we've discussed the perks, let's talk about the actual weapons. There are 17 different weapon categories out there ranging from auto rifles to glaives and each one of them has its own subcategory called a frame. Frames take the existing structure of the gun and modify it slightly so that the weapon functions typically as either shooting faster with less damage or slower with more damage. This is a broad oversimplification, but as a first introduction, I think this will help get you started. For PvE content, most weapons are viable in any situation given they have the appropriate perks. What you need to bear in mind are the modifiers on the activities. If there's champions in a nightfall, you need to make sure you have weapons that match those champions, either through their intrinsic capabilities or through seasonal mods. Some of these weapons do see more use than others just because of how they function, and that's some game sense that you'll pick up as you play more. So for example, I personally don't bring a trace rifle into a Grandmaster unless it's Divinity because they just don't output enough damage quickly enough for my playstyle. I would rather use a grenade launcher that's quick fire, forget, return to cover, and then move on. With some of the recent and upcoming changes, shotguns are going to be a slight outlier here, along with a lot of the primary weapons. The update is going to make pellet firing shotguns fire in a predetermined way based on their frame. 
With this reduction in randomization, you now need to pay attention to your shotgun frame a little bit more. I perceive precision and slug based shotguns will still be the best in PvP as they line up with the natural shape of a guardian, but for PvE I don't think this change is going to be that impactful. What will have a major impact is the accessibility change that will allow all weapons to become fully automatic. This means that those rapid fire frames that shoot fast and do less damage will no longer need to wear your hands to use or require the full auto mod. I am curious how this will work with heavy linear fusion rifles as it might make the timing easier for newer players to achieve a higher damage output. Finally, I want to quickly cover armor and mods. When you're looking for stats on an armor, there's a few things you might not know. The stats on the armor are split into two buckets. The top three stats are in one bucket and the bottom three in another. This means that while you have a 66 stat armor piece, 33 will be in the top and 33 will be in the bottom. In addition to that, there's a minimum of two for each armor stat. So what this essentially means is that it's going to be very difficult to max out all three stats from one bucket. Typically you want resilience and recovery to be high with discipline as your bottom bucket option, but stats along with the mods are going to be build specific and will depend on what you're trying to accomplish. As a default, try to work your armor mods around your stats and your playstyle. If you like to throw grenades, use ashes to assets and bombers. If you want to be more melee focused, use outreach and hands on. Also just know that elemental well mods are very powerful right now and are a great way to keep your abilities up. So with all that being said, please let me know if there's anything else you want to know or more, something more specific in the comments below. Also feel free to join the discord and we can have a more in-depth discussion there. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.